I got my top favorite web design resources that you should bookmark if you want to be a great web designer. Dora AI. Now Dora can create basically a website with a simple prompt and it would generate for you. So let's type in something like for an observatory that photos of galaxies and space. So I've created my prompt. It takes me to the back end dashboard where I can generate it using the token. So I'm going to quickly generate that. I have 120 to uh, credits to start off with because it's just free. So you can see we've got a design here. Let's, um, let's just go with the first one. I'm gonna click generate, boom, and there we have it. Once we've generated it, the page, you can see it's all editable. It's got text, it's got images, it's created the layout and the sections for us, which is really amazing. So I can go in here and you've got to upgrade to edit, but you can see I'll be able to, you know, change this, change the colors. You've got layers on the side as well. You can also add data into the database. You've got design. I can add um, boxes. You've got constraints. So it's all very similar to Figma, basically. Now, Reloom does an amazing job at this as well. I love using Reloom. You can generate um, sites for Figma and Webflow. So I can say um, a gaming company that pub um, sells RPG games to young men. Type that, and then I can change the pages to one to five and click generate sitemap. We'll do it really fast, and it will start to generate all the sections and I can easily um, replace the sections, customize it, add text, customize the headings, etc. So you can see hero section, feature section, uh, list, benefits, CTA, FAQ. We can start to generate the content for these other ones as well. I can add custom sections. You can see on the right, you've got nav bar footers, blank sections. And what I love is if I go to the top and click wireframe, it will start to automatically generate the wireframe and I can literally click copy, paste it into Figma using their Figma plugin or just copy straight from this, uh, from Reloom to Webflow and I'm done. And I can, then I've got to just add the colors, the logos and the design. Um, but you can see here, everything is uh, editable. I can ask AI to customize it. You know, you can do a lot of different things here. Another alternative to Reloom is actually Tilebit. It's a bit more cheaper and they do have limited components, but at the moment they've got some great components that you can use and I can just pump it straight into Webflow. Um, so you can see here, for example, maybe I really love this header. I can left click on it and I can um, look at the categories, I can share it, I can save it, which is cool. And then if I want to copy it, I can copy to Figma or Webflow. So if I just, uh, yeah, Framer and Webflow. So for example, um, I can copy, let's say, wait, let's go Figma and I'll just go into Figma and paste and boom, there you go. I can go into here, start changing the text, you know, change the color, do whatever I want to. And it's just amazing. Like it's just, super fast to create websites. Next up, we've got Flowbase. The Flowbase is a similar one as well. It's a component library, which is great for Webflow. Um, also Figma and Framer, which is great. They do have some freebies as well. So if I click on components, then you what you wanna do is select, say we'll just click Figma for now. And I'll scroll down to the free it's license. You wanna click on free. There is a pro version, obviously, uh, but then say I want something like this. I'll click copy for Figma. It will give me the code and I'm just gonna, paste it right into there. And then I've got a frame of this um, nice feature section, which I can edit. So another great website, plenty of components. And if you want to upgrade, you've got heaps of stuff on that. Next one, we've got Landbook, one of my favorite sites for web and landing page inspiration. And I love how they've got categories at the top. So if you want to look at, maybe you're working on a portfolio, I'll click on that. And then it will give me all the websites that revolve around portfolios. Uh, if I want to look at maybe um, pricing, Ones that focus on pricing, I can look at that, left click on it, and I can see the design. It gives you me the website on the right hand side, so I can left click on that and it'll take me to that website, as you can see there, which is super cool. Or I can just view the screenshot here, and it get, you know, it gives you the style, categories. I can even look at the colors. If I click on the color, it will show me other websites with that similar green color that I clicked on, or whatever color you select. So this is just a great site for inspiration, um, and I'm always on here when I want to do a design uh, for a client. Next up, we've got godly.website. Now, this is more tech SaaS um, type of vibe. Um, as you can see, we can filter by Web3, AI, SaaS. Um, so if I click on SaaS, it's gonna give me all these cool ones. And you know, I can left click and it's gonna show me the design. If I click visit, it will take me to that website, as we can see here. And it looks beautiful, this website but it's just got heaps of different websites. This is completely free and it's just a great tool to get inspiration. Look at what other brands are doing. 
I can filter by like dark mode or big background or gradient. So if I click gradient, you can see we'll get some specific designs that use gradients as you can see here. And if I click visit, it will take me straight there. Next, we've got dark dot design. Now, if you're a fan of dark design, designs that have sort of, you know, darker colors, they use black backgrounds, dark grays, dark colors, heart like really, um, you know, a whole bunch of cool, really cool like modern websites. Um, as you can see, I'll click on this one, blockchain, and it'll take me to the website. Like this one is pretty lit, look at this. This is some craziness. <laughs> I got a robot and it transforms, like that's pretty dope. If I go back, you can see it tells me the category, the framework, and also the CMS. So this one's on Webflow, no code, love that. I've also got mobbin.com. This is another popular one. You probably already know this one. It's perfect for apps and looking at app screens from big um, brands. So I can look at websites. I can look at, if I go on Android or iOS as well, maybe I want to look at Burger King, look left click. And then if I just click my arrow keys, it will take me to the next brand. Um, but you can see it's an onboarding. If I want to look at more onboarding, I'll click on that and I can see the whole process. And then basically it's what a lot of designers do. They just copy what already works. Like why try and reinvent the wheel? Just look at what other big brands are doing and then obviously add your brand, add your flavor to it. But Mobbin is just another great site for hundreds and thousands of just sites and brands. So you got plenty of inspiration there. Next, I got a color one. This one is Mesh Gradients, products.ls.graphics, Mesh Gradients. You can download the full pack. Basically, um, you can get an AI file or a PNG, JPEG. So maybe I love this orange gradient or this pale chestnut. I'm going to click download and just right click, save it, image as, and I can just download that file just like that. It'll give me a WebP file and I can use that for Webflow, chuck it in a website if I want to. Uh, it's really easy to download, it's free, so why not try it out? Another inspiration website is inspovault.com. Now you can see I'm on the website category. It's got staff picks as well. So websites it will show me the screens. I can left click on it. You can see some of the designs here. I think that's really cool. You can scroll through the website. You can click view, it will take me there. You can also bookmark things as well. So this is another great inspiration. Plenty of amazing sites on here. Next we've got navbar.gallery. So this one's specific to navbars. You can also filter in the category. So maybe I want a screen, uh, sorry, a search bar. Um, maybe I like this one. <laughs> We're just on Mobbin before, so you can see the Mobbin version. Uh, we've got DeFi from Uniswap. You can see how their drop downs look like. Very clean using dark grays with the drop shadow. Pretty cool. So if you're into nav bars and it's more complex sites, definitely check this out. We've also got Storytale.io. Now this one is really great for illustrations, 3D uh, assets. If I click on freebies in the top left corner, it will take me to the, to, to the assets. So I can filter, you can see, maybe I want backgrounds or icons, mockups or 3D. If I click 3D, you can see, I just wanna scroll through there. Um, you can get the upgrade as well to the pro version. You can click on pricing. I'm gonna go on illustrations as well. They've got some scribbles, which is cool, more organic hand-drawn and a bit of mock-ups as well. Or if you want to click on packs, I can look at all their packs here. So it's got a nice variety here. Next, we've got Contrast Checker. Now, Contrast Checker is great for when you're building a website and you wanna see if the contract uh, contrast is great. So what I can do is, um, you know, I can change the hue. I can bring up the contrast, bring down the contrast, the lightness as well. So you can see here, it will tell you if it's a pass on the large um, or normal and if it's a fail. So you can see here, the text is now invisible. But if I bring it down back to dark, bring the blackness, it passes. It's good to test out um, different colors. So it's just accessibility. Some people, you know, can't see um, when it's bad contrast. So it's just a good way to deal with that problem. And you can change the fonts, as you can see, and you can do a test here at the bottom. So next we've got typescale.com. If you want to build out a nice design system for fonts, um, you go on the left and you can change the scale. Usually I use like major third, minor third, um, or major second usually. So you can see you can increase it. You can really do whichever one you want, depending on the brand and the strategy and etc. I can look at the pixels. I can keep it on REM as well. I usually work with REM when I'm in Webflow, but let's just say we're in pixels. You can see 61 pixels there, 48 for the H3, H4, H5, H6, and it goes down to the paragraph as well, P and small. So um, you can check it on how it looked like on the phone. If I click these little icons in the corners, 
Um, I can also just get rid of this as well if I do this one. You can change the text as well. You can change the fonts. You can change the line height as well. Letter spacing, colors. Um, you really have full control over what it looks like. I can increase the size, but that's on pro version. And it's just a good way to do this for when a design system for a website. Next, we've got colors.eva.design. Now this one allows me to put in a code. If I click on the color, maybe I'm working with, uh, let's go with like a tealy color, which is nice. It will give me all the tints. So it will go from 100 to 900 and it gives me the code when I put my mouse over it. And if I left click, it will copy it. And then I can go to Figma and say, I want to change the color here. Boom. I can easily change the color of that font. And you can do it for all of these. So maybe we'll, walk, you know, whatever brand you're working on, whatever. And then what you can do, you can actually lock these. Um, if you get the updated version, you can lock these and then you can just save these palettes, which is super cool. I can also click on the dark mode and it will change to that. And then I can actually export. So if I go to export, I can export as a JPEG and then I can download that. And then I'll just drop it into Figma and I can copy the colors. Next one, one of my favorite ones is a footer.design. So this is specifically for beautiful looking footers for your websites. You can filter by typographic, illustrative, grid, so if I click on that, it'll take me to all the websites that have a grid style footer. For example, if I click on this one, this looks really cool. I like the lines there. You can click view website, it'll take you there and it shows you the styles and it'll give you some other um, similar sites to that as well. We go to animated, click on that. And let's say view website, I'll, I'll just scroll down. That's a cool footer with the arrow there. I think that's really dope. So. Footer, another great design as well, and it's really easy to navigate. We've got Magnific.ai. Now it can upscale um, images. So I'm gonna quickly upload a simple image. Then let me double click this one. And what I can do, I can do like, four, uh, if you go to four times, you have to upgrade, but let's just uh, keep it at two times. And you can write a prompt and, uh, and you have limited credits, just keep in mind. So I've got the credit there. Now I'm gonna go down and you know, you can increase HDR, the creativity, um, resemblance, maybe bring that down. You've got uh, practicality as well, so you can read through that. I would just use uh, automatic. You can also click optimize for, you can leave it on standard, you can do portraits, illustrations, video game assets, 3D renders. So if you wanna do something specific, then click on one of those categories. You can see it's upscaled it, it's way better quality as you can see. This is an image I generated on Adobe Firefly. So it's just made it a bit more sharper made it a bit better with the shapes. Um, you can do this with like images. You can do this with anything really, and it'll upscale it. Squash.app, now this is a great quick website. It's similar to TinyJPEG, so TinyJPEG can um, do multiple images as well, but if you've got you know something that's really big, um, then Squash is like for quick images, I can literally um, drop a massive image. So I drop that in there, it will retain the quality and reduce the size. So this one was eight megabytes. Now it's dropped it by 93% in the right corner to 500. And it literally looks, the quality is pretty sharp. You can change, you can resize it. You can change the compression. Maybe if you want to go to WebP as well, we can do that. Um, you can increase the quality, say like maybe 80. And you can see that it's pretty cool. And I left, uh, left click on that image and I can just download it and it will give me that image. And now I've got this image there and the size is reduced. So this is great when you want to optimize images for a Webflow site or whatever website you're working on. Next we've got startupwebsites.co, beautiful websites, another great place for inspiration. You'll probably see sites you've already seen on this one. Uh, let's just click on minimal and you can see some of these beautiful websites. Let's just click on this one, equipped. It's got the details on the right and I can scroll through. It looks really clean. Next we've got minimal.gallery. This one is another beautiful website and for functional websites as well. You've got a whole bunch of different categories we can click through. Now this one's a unique one. It's called interfaceingame.com. If you are a gamer or you're building a website for a game publisher or a game studio, uh, then, or maybe you're working on UI for a game itself, you can actually, you know, click on any of these and it will give you the in-game UI. So if I left click, go through my, with my arrow keys, I can see all the UI, I can download it, I can like it. It gives me all the game UI, which I think is super dope. 
as well. So it's another great site. It's got plenty of screenshots. If you click on screenshots in games, for example, this is the division. Even has animations like it's just really good. Next, we've got darkmodedesign.com, similar to the other um, website, but it's got sites that have you know dark style websites, dark colors. Um, for example, this one, Basement Foundry. I felt I last time I looked at this bright orange and just it's, a, it's actually a font site, really dope website. So anything that has like dark backgrounds has endless endless inspiration there for you. Next we've got Font Ninja. Now Font Ninja is an awesome Chrome extension. I literally can go on any website. So for example, I'll go to um, this one and if I click on Font Ninja, just to turn it on, I can then basically look at the website fonts and put my mouse over the fonts and it will tell me JetBrains Mono um, and it's also telling me Inter. But you can see here, this is the font that they're using. And then usually it'll take, I can bookmark it or install it or take me to the website. It literally works for like any type of um, site. Um, for example, let's just go on this website here. Left click on the Font Ninja and once it's on, it tells me two fonty, graphic, regular. It also got semi bold, medium and granite pro. So it even tells you the sizes, the color, the line height, uh, and even the... Next we've got Fonts in the Wild. It just shows fonts from different websites. It's just like snippets or screenshots. It will show me Anik Primer. I can download it. It'll tell me it's pay, which is good. So I know what I'm getting into. But they'll click on other ones. It tells me the font here. And then I can click on it and it should take me to that font site. Photo Grotesque, there you go. Super, super cool. Next, we've got HeroIcons.com. So, Beautiful Handcrafted SVG icons by Tailwind CSS. These are all free. I can copy an SVG and then, you know, go to Figma, paste it in, and maybe I just want to drop it into there somewhere. doesn't have that much in there, but it's pretty decent to get something started. Next, we've got drawkit.com. Now, they have illustrations. That's also got a plugin as well for an avatar. You've got 2D, 3D icons, animations, bit of mock-ups. Um, most of it is paid, though. But say I want to click on this one, you can see they got some really nice quality kits, um, different styles. You've got an isometric one here that looks pretty dope. So yeah, they've got really strong illustrative assets in this one. Next, we've got IconScout.com. They've got body animations, illustrations, icons, 3D stuff. They've got a bunch of different things. So if I want to search maybe vector icons, you can go through there. I can go through the illustrations. They've got a lot of 3D stuff, so I think this would work really well. And they've got some lots of free stuff as well you can use. We've also got blush.design. I'm in their collection section. They've got uh, some free illustrations. Some are paid, but it's just cool to, you know, download and drop it into a placeholder for a website while you're working on it for a client. And then you can always invest in some other illustrations down the track. But beautiful stuff here. Love the style, it's very, lots of variety. Next, we've got emaillove.com. If you design emails for clients, like say your MailChimp or something, you've got a whole bunch here. And it's really great, you got um, trends or you can do categories, maybe you want SaaS companies, see what they're doing at the moment. Uh, you know, we can look at Miro and we can see how they structure their emails, like how they design it, or even this one. That's how they do their emails, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, plenty of ideas and inspiration for you there. So those are my top web design resources for you that's gonna help you grow as a designer, as a solo agency owner, or if you're uh, someone just looking to grow your asset list. I hope this helps you. Leave a comment below if this was helpful. And if you want more videos just like this, remember to subscribe because it helps the channel out. It helps me grow. I really appreciate it. And if you do want to get some other resources, I did a video about other graphic design resources that you can check out right here. And if you want to learn more about how to create a web flow website or design a brand, I'll put some course links down below, which you can get. I'll see you in the next video.